Recollection Road is proud to partner with Legacy Box. Watch until the end of this video to find out more about digitizing your family's irreplaceable memories, and then visit LegacyBox.com recollection for an incredible 55% off. Homes during the 1940s embraced the architectural styles of Colonial, Cape Cod, Tudor, and Ranch. These styles favored symmetry and simplicity, which gave off a modest appearance. Cape Cod homes, for instance, featured steep roofs, central chimneys, and a balanced facade, embodying a traditional look. Because of material shortages caused during World War II, new homes were built with efficiency in mind. Smaller footprints were considered, with fewer ornate details. So ranch-style homes with one level became the most common new building style of the decade. Older homes during this period often still had front porches, or large stoops, which carried over from the previous decades. This allowed families to have an outdoor space, where they could sit and relax after a long day. It also was a place to talk to neighbors, which built a sense of community. Remember also, indoor air conditioning wasn't available, so people would also use the front porch to cool off while chatting, watching the world go by, or maybe just listening to a radio broadcast. Life during the 1940s during World War II included rationing and regulations that stopped the production of many things, including cars and many household items. The 40s home had some unique items because of this that may not be so common in homes today. As you walked through the front door, you entered the living room, which was the heart of socializing and family time. It usually featured a fireplace as a centerpiece. Couches and armchairs were upholstered in rich, textured fabrics. Heavy draperies adorned the windows, and the overall look was traditional and functional. In the 1940s, home entertainment consisted of radio shows, board games, card games, listening to music, and reading. If the family only had one radio, then it was usually somewhere in the living room, so they could invite friends and neighbors over for coffee and dessert while listening to Amos and Andy, Bing Crosby, The Green Hornet, or one of the other popular shows of the era. You might also hear a record playing big band music, like Glenn Miller or Duke Ellington. The living room also had some kind of magazine rack, which held the newspaper and magazines, with the floor lamp behind one of the chairs for reading. Because this was also a time of war, some homes also had blackout curtains to make cities a more difficult target for a potential enemy attack. The dining room was where you might find a telephone. They usually sat on a small telephone table that had a drawer to hold the phone book. The phone was kept in the dining room so it wouldn't interrupt conversations or radio listening in the living room. The average dining room included a wooden table and chairs, buffet, and maybe even a china cabinet. Chandeliers were a major part of the dining room decor, and they weren't just found in wealthy homes, but more of a standard feature found in homes of all price ranges. Large wall mirrors might also be found hanging above the buffet. Wax flower arrangements were another popular way to dress up the dining room, and bouquets of them would adorn the table or sideboard. A 1940s kitchen was a functional space, with a strong emphasis on efficiency. Metal cabinets with enamel finishes were in vogue, which made cleanup easier. Vintage appliances like stoves and refrigerators often were white, but you could also get them in some pastel colors. Ice boxes were also still prevalent, with homes receiving daily visits from both the Iceman and the Milkman. The kitchen also included some electric countertop appliances, like toasters, coffee percolators, and mixers. Other kitchen decor included tea kettles, cookie jars, and canisters. Chrome was a popular accent during this time because it was easy to clean, so you could find it on handles, table legs, and trimming out some of the countertop accessories in a typical kitchen. Most homes did not have air conditioning at this time, so a floor fan to cool the kitchen during the summer months was a common sight. The floor was usually covered in linseed linoleum, with geometric patterns adding some excitement to the kitchen. The 1940s was a transition period that saw the introduction of many new kitchen innovations that are still commonplace today. Electric stoves, refrigerators, and other appliances became much more accessible to the average household. 
and this transitioned cooking and food storage into a new era that involved appliances that were more advanced with features we had never seen. Moving into the bedroom, most houses were holdovers from previous decades. New builds, however, were designed with built-in closets as a standard feature. Others use what's called a shift robe, which is a piece of furniture with a bar for hanging clothes, plus drawers for folded items. It was also standard for a large mirror to attach to the bureau. Many women had a hope chest or a cedar chest where they kept keepsakes and extra blankets. Beds during this time, along with all of the furniture, were made of solid wood and featured elegant headboards and footboards. You might also find handmade quilts draped across the bed, showcasing intricate patterns and craftsmanship. Bathrooms from the 1940s were a blend of modern amenities and timeless charm. Clawfoot tubs, pedestal sinks, and hexagonal tiles were pretty standard. The color palette tended to be soft, with pastels being the colors of choice. Art Deco influences could be seen in the bathroom, reflected in the geometric pattern flooring and sleek chrome fixtures mounted to porcelain. With half of the 1940s taken over by the Second World War, the average house was far from affluent. With rationing and shortages still widespread, families made do with what they had. As the war ended, the great rebuilding program began. The demand for housing increased rapidly, and many new homes were built on the outskirts of towns, creating the modern suburbs that we know today. But these homes are much smaller than we are used to, with many having just 1,000 square feet of living space. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything, and maybe even consider supporting the channel over on Patreon. Recollection Road and Legacy Box both believe it's important to preserve the past. If you're like me, there's a box of your family's treasured home movies and photos tucked away somewhere, and Legacy Box can help you preserve them digitally. The process is a simple and safe solution for converting your home movies and photos to thumb drive or to the cloud. Just send in your Legacy Box filled with old VHS and camcorder tapes, film reels, and pictures, and get back digital copies that can be easily enjoyed, shared, and kept organized. It's that easy. Legacy Box is trusted by over 1 million people, and it's all done right here in the USA. Get started preserving your past today. Go to LegacyBox.com slash recollection to get an incredible 55% off. Buy today to take advantage of this exclusive offer and send in your memories when you're ready. Go to LegacyBox.com slash recollection to save 55% while supplies last. If you enjoyed this video, consider watching this playlist, and then visit the channel to search the Recollection Road Library. As always, thank you so much for watching.